Hey and welcome back to my channel. Welcome to another video. I hope that you're doing well today. Before I jump into the topic, which I'm sure you can already tell from the title of this video, yes, I am no longer vegan. But again, before we jump into that, please be sure to hit the subscribe button down below if you're not already subscribed. I come out with a video every week and they've been pretty good if you ask me and they're only going to get better from here. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up because it definitely lets me know what kind of content you guys are interested in watching. And be sure to leave me a comment below with any questions you may want to see featured in a Q&A video or any questions you may have in general or anything that you just want to share. Some love, some feedback, whatever the case is. So, with all that out of the way, sorry if you guys can hear traffic <laughs> and if you hear things rolling upstairs in the neighbor's apartment and any other sounds that you may hear. It's also thunderstorming outside, so it's just an interesting day to film. But before we get started, I do want to mention um, I may or may not look down at my notes because I do have some notes. I am keeping this short and sweet as per usual, trying my best to keep everything very short and to the point. Um, so with that being said, let's go ahead and just jump right in. So one of my favorite quotes, which is what you saw in the beginning of the video, is that everything is necessary until it's no longer necessary. And this not only applied to when I combed out my locks after having them for two years, which if you haven't seen that video, I'll link it somewhere in the cards or in the description below, uh, but it also applied to the way that I eat. And this is actually something that came up while I was combing out my locks. So uh, a lot of things in my life started unraveling and food was one of them. And I had hit a point, and this is mid-August, so it's been about two months since I've made the decision and acted on it. Um, so this was about mid-August after I was combing out some of my lots, and just a lot of things were unraveling. And I really began to realize how um, my body had kind of reached a state where it was not at its best. Um, so for a quick backstory, when I went to college, again, back with college, in 2010, I was quite thin. Um, I wasn't necessarily healthy, I was just very thin. And um, I wasn't eating the best. But I wasn't concerned at the time because again, I was skinny and I thought I looked good. And I began to put on weight as I put the next plan on birth control bar in my arm. That was one factor. Another factor was I was hoarding a lot of my own emotions inside my body and they were being stored as toxins along with stress because <laughs> I was working um, by the time I had graduated college, I was working two jobs, barely making minimum wage, like barely meeting, barely meeting the needs, you know, putting a lot of stuff on credit. Um, it was a tough time. It really was. And so I was not eating the best. I was eating a lot of comfort foods, a lot of pizza, a lot of pasta. I had moments here and there when I was trying to lose weight and I would try to eat healthy and work out, but those would only last for so long because I literally was just depressed. I was not happy with how life was going and I just didn't know how I was going <laughs> to make it through, to be honest. Um, and when I moved here, that's when I really kind of started trying to lose weight. Um, and I tried a bunch of diets in between, I would say, 2010 and now, so eight years. I tried a bunch of diets, including things like keto, paleo, vegan, vegetarian, uh, breatharian, liquidarian, <laughs> fasting, all kinds of fasting, raw vegan. You know, I've tried a lot of diets in between that eight years of time that has passed. Um, but... For some reason, I kept finding my way back to veganism. I wouldn't last very long, to be honest. I would last maybe a few weeks at best uh, before I would cave and I would eat my meat again. Uh, then September of last year, of 2017, is when it finally stuck. September 1st, I did a 30-day vegan challenge, and some of you guys actually joined in with me on that challenge um, back then a year ago, which was really awesome. Um, but it stuck. It stayed. Like I just found that I just didn't have the need to eat meat anymore or any kind of animal products. And so that began my vegan journey. And so I did primarily go vegan for health reasons. It had really nothing to do with animals at all. And it doesn't mean that I don't care about how animals are treated. I do think factory farming is a terrible thing. And that's not something I'm gonna get into in this video because that can go into a whole nother topic itself. Um, but I do just wanna say I did go vegan for health reasons because I saw it as a way of detoxing my body of the standard American diet I had been eating for so many, so many years. So 
that began my journey. I began to emotionally detox a lot. I faced a lot of emotions head on, especially when I did a lot of these cleanses, which I also documented. I documented, I think the most recent one was I did a 14 day fruitarian cleanse. Um, and so I faced a lot of emotions, a lot of cravings, dealing with why I was having those cravings. And I just began to release a lot of weight. So since September of 2017, I've lost a total of 40 pounds. Um, I still have some more to go, but right now I'm in a good space for sure. <laughs> um, but I started incorporating things like stretching and taking care of my body. I just saw my body in a whole different way. My period came back, which was something that uh, if you've watched any of my fertility journey videos, you know that that is something that I had had an irregular period and a missing period for a very, very long time. And it's been consistent since I got it back in October of 2017. I've consistently, so it's literally been a year of me consistently getting my cycle. Um, so the first thing I want to say is that I have no qualms with veganism. I absolutely adore it. I think it's an amazing way of detoxing the body. Now with that being said, I am definitely somebody who believes in balance and believes in finding your middle. And for me, being vegan for as long as I was, I was vegan for 11 months. So I didn't quite make it to the year and actually around 10 months is when I started to kind of feel like things were kind of coming to an end. Again, everything is necessary until it's no longer necessary. So for me, going vegan was basically trying to even out the balance because I had gone so far to the right, right? Eating standard American diet, eating a bunch of junk, filling my body with just crud. My body literally could not clean itself, which is why I wasn't getting my period, why I didn't have things like acne popping up on my face to alert me that things weren't working properly or that I needed to kind of clean my diet up, which is why like you'll see in my forehead right now, my digestive and liver system are letting me know that this past weekend I ate a lot of cheat meals and my body knows it. And it's like, all right, girl, clean it up, clean it up. <laughs> um, but I didn't have all these signs. My body wasn't able to alert me with anything. It was just literally packing on weight because it had no way to, to really push this stuff out. So... Um, I got sick quite a bit, um, and not sick in the way like I would blame veganism. It was sick as far as throughout my time of being vegan, that was my body's way of clearing out a lot of the mucus and a lot of just the built-up crud that had been within my body for so long. Um, so going vegan helped to kind of bring me back into balance, but there's a point, at least for me, and I know that for many others may relate as well, where you detox for so long that your body becomes weak and almost de well, deficient in a lot of vitamins and that was the case for me. Um, I hit a point where I couldn't go a day without taking multiple naps. Uh, I was always cold and before going vegan in all my life I've had issues with being cold especially in my fingers and toes which I'm now learning stems from just my body not absorbing enough iron and also having to do just with the sources of iron that I'm eating. <laughs> um, that's a whole nother story. But I started feeling very weak, very tired, very just exhausted, fatigued, um, had no energy whatsoever. Um, I was just unhappy and I was cold all the time and I was craving meat like on a level that I just had never craved meat before. I was thinking about burgers a lot, which was a big sign for me with the iron as well um, because, I, I mean, I could go into this for, for hours, but... I'll just keep it simple in saying that I just noticed I was craving specific nutrients and that I couldn't get it all in just the vegan diet because I couldn't eat enough <laughs> because honestly my stomach would get so full so quickly that I was barely eating and so I wasn't getting enough calories to begin with and I wasn't eating enough greens and things like that because I literally couldn't pack that much food into my stomach and I, I wasn't hungry enough throughout the day. I was literally only eating maybe twice a day. I still only eat twice a day, but now my food is much more dense with a lot more protein, which on the other hand, I know people will mention protein, but things like beans and tofu did not agree with my gut at all. I would have extreme just gassiness and constipation and just all kinds of the greens especially were just like tearing my insides up. I was dealing with colitis symptoms. Um, so there was just a lot going on where I just knew that I had hit a point where I had gone too far with the detoxing. And it again reminds me of what I said in the lock journey video where I mentioned it's like being in the winter for two years long and 
you never see spring, summer, or fall. For me, doing the veganism, you know, every season is a certain certain type of thing. It's either going to be a cleansing season or a rebuilding. I find that spring and fall tend to be those cleansing seasons and winter and spring. Winter and summer tend to be seasons of rebuilding, you know, and obviously throughout those seasons, you're eating different kinds of foods. In the winter, it's more hot and, you know, warming and cozy foods, where in the summer, it's more raw foods and fresh foods and things like that. But you're doing it in a level where you're cleansing and then rebuilding, cleansing and then rebuilding. But I was in a state of cleansing, cleansing, cleansing for 11 months. And so it was like my body was yearning to rebuild and to balance out my gut, especially. Um, so that's where I kind of am now. Um, I stopped being vegan because of those reasons. I realized I had gone too far left and that it was time to kind of bring myself back to the middle. And so for the last two months, I have eaten quite a bit of meat. Most of it is organic unless I eat out at a restaurant. And I've tried to find restaurants here and there that source locally organic foods and meats and things like that. Uh, but for the most part, I do eat a very clean, what is clean anyway, right? Um, I have a specific way of eating. So I'm going to quickly mention what I'm doing now. Um, this is something that I'm going to go in more detail with you guys as time progresses. So just like I'll be doing a one month post lock home out check in with you guys, I'm also going to be doing a, you know, a one month post veganism check in with you guys. Um, so in about a month's time, you'll see another video come out where I kind of give you guys some updates um, because there's a certain way that I'm taking care of my body, a certain way that I'm eating. Um, so quickly, let me just, I'm eating obviously meat. Um, the meats that I tend to eat would be beef and chicken and turkey. Um, I really don't care for pork. I eat duck every now and then if I'm trying it at a restaurant. Um, but you know, like the poultry, the pork and wild game kind of family, um, that's pretty much what I eat as far as meat goes. And then I'll also have seafood. So I've had um, white fish and I've had salmon. Those have been the two fish that I've tried. And um, I really enjoying the way meat tastes and the way that the texture is and the way that it feels compared to prior prior to being vegan. So that's one thing. And I've also gained a lot more strength. Um, I cannot tell you how much better I had I felt just by incorporating meat back into my diet. Um, and the first thing I did was I actually just went and I got a burger at a restaurant. I didn't go to a fast food place or anything. I went to a restaurant and got, um, I believe it was a bison burger. And I mean, people can say it was the placebo effect, but when I tell you, I literally felt instantaneously better. Like I had just gotten a shot of vitamins into my system. Uh, and so ever since then, I've been eating meat. I've been eating probably, I would say about 30% of my diet has been protein from meat um, and trying to balance it out with everything else. So that's one thing I'm doing. Um, I am cutting back on fruits. I actually haven't had any fruits in the past two months. Um, I do have fruit juices mixed with like sparkling water, but I keep it to cranberry juice or pomegranate juice or blueberries, uh, blueberry juice or raspberry. Those are the four, you know, basically the berry family minus strawberries um, because I am trying to cut down on sugar um, because I am helping to heal my gut. So, and again, this is something I'll go in more depth in in a month's time so that I can give you more details and like not make this video super duper long. Uh, so another thing that I'm doing is I'm eating lots of veggies and um, these are, you know, what people call your prebiotics, which is where they work with probiotics to help develop the bacteria in your gut so that they can overcome the yeast that may have taken over from the way you were eating in the past. And if you've ever gotten antibiotics, <laughs> you'll definitely need some probiotics in your life because you basically wipe the shit out of all the good life in your gut. So with that being said, I eat a lot of veggies. Um, I still do take in my greens, but I mix them. Um, I may practice food combining, so I do my best to try to just eat like my meats with veggies only, and then if I have starch, just eating those with veggies only. Um, I'm still in the transitionary phase, so I still have some meals, like I'm having some um, chicken stew tonight where I have it with a little bit of potato in it, but it's no rice or no noodles or anything with the stew, it's just the stew. So I'm slowly transitioning both my husband and I, and then by next week, uh, within the next one or two weeks for sure, it'll be probably like 90% sticking to this uh, without my, you know, with my cheat meals every now and then. Um, so again, food combining, so, you know, starches and veggies, meats and veggies, you know, mix, knowing what fats kind of go well with what dishes and things like that. 
Um, I am, the fats that I'm primarily using are things like olive oil and ghee, and then of course any kind of animal fat that's coming off of the meat. Um, those are my main sources of fat right now. Um, herbal teas and water is mainly what I'm drinking. I do again have a mixture where I mix some sparkling water with some, um, some juice of some sort, and it's usually, a, right now it's either the palm pomegranate juice or it's a blueberry pomegranate juice that I'm buying from the store. Um, I'm practicing typically having one veggie meal a day and one meat meal. I don't eat meat for both meals unless my body really is like letting me know that it needs it. Uh, but for the most part, my lunch is typically a veggie meal. So like today I had grits with um, kale and artichoke hearts in it. And then so for dinner, I'll be having my chicken stew. I typically, again, have one veggie meal and one meat meal. Some days I may be all veggies. And some days I may be all meat. It, it's more intuitive eating and just kind of trusting that my body knows what it needs and I'm just going to listen. Um, the other thing is grains. I'm cutting back on certain grains as well. I'm really only eating like things like corn grits and quinoa right now if I'm allowing myself to have grains. And if it's a cheat meal, then obviously I'll let myself have some bread or pasta or something like that. But again, those are things that rarely happen except for this weekend when I went a little crazy and that's why again you see this on my forehead. <laughs> um, the last thing that I am doing is um, cultured foods, probiotics, digestive enzymes, and supplements. So yes I could have stayed vegan and taken a bunch of supplements but again for me I found that my body was just at a point where it was asking for me and I was not going to just keep my life in a restrictive level when I wasn't happy with what I was eating. Um, especially because I was doing veganism for a health-based reason. So um, I have started taking a supplement. I'm not going to say which one right now. I'm going to wait and give it a month because I literally just started taking it. Um, prior to that, I was just eating a lot of like cultured veggies and I was drinking coconut kefir and water kefir. Um, so I would be eating, eating kimchi and sauerkraut and things like that. But um, I found that just making sure I'm taking some sort of vitamin every day so right now I'm taking a supplement that has both probiotics, digestive enzymes, and the actual like supplements of various vitamins all made from raw fruits and vegetables. Um, and so I take two of those two times a day, so four a total. Um, so I've just started those, so I'll let you know how they go. But I can tell you that just from me drinking coconut kefir, drinking gut shots, um, drinking water kefir and having cultured veggies was making a huge difference in my digestion, in my gut, in my pooping. That might be TMI, but it was making the biggest difference. Like things just started flowing. Another thing I've incorporated is practicing Tai Chi around two to three times a week in the morning. So that's essentially what I'm doing right now. I'm not trying to stress myself and push it too hard, but that was like my, that's my middle right now. Um, so yeah, everything is necessary until it's no longer necessary. That's really what I want to leave you guys on. That's where I am as far as my diet. Again, I'm going to come out with more updates as time goes on. I'll be doing a one month update and then towards the end of the year, I'll really kind of be sharing my weight loss journey story because I know that I'm going to be releasing more weight and I really want to wait till I've kind of reached that weight that feels really good for me before I make a weight loss journey story. But I will be, again, posting about my one month update. So if you have any questions about how I'm currently eating or about veganism in general or about what made me, you know, if you have any further questions on what made me stop eating vegan or whatever the case may be, leave them down below. And if you want your question featured in a Q&A, just hashtag AskSA um, with your question and I'll be sure to make sure that I put it in the group of videos that are going to be coming out with question and answers. So. With that being said, I've held you long enough. Thank you so much for watching. I truly, truly appreciate and love you. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.